flip on CNN, Communist News Network, or we flip on the, uh, the other uh, bunch. That's, I'm, I don't know which one, the right or the left, worse. They argue so much, it's pathetic. I mean, they, I, they can't get agreement over nothing. I mean, if, see, if we did more doing instead of talking, we could have our country go another direction. But nobody wants to. It's profitable either side. Be right or be left. But we need to understand there's going to be a lot of people left because the ones that are right are going out and finding people need Jesus, not what, what their party believe. we got to stand on the covenant of God and take that forward in our lives today. And, you know, when you get up every day, we constantly look at this life and wonder what's going on. And God says, pick up your Bible first, and you will see what's going on. There's nothing new in hell. There's nothing new in heaven. It's a done deal. Jesus said it's finished. We're supposed to represent a kingdom that's coming, and it's already existing in the lives of men and women who belong to Christ. Listen, we've got to start doing the work of the kingdom, getting out here and finding people that don't know Jesus. I don't give a rip what they think or what they feel like. They will not see God if they don't see Jesus. Amen. And we've got to present Jesus to them. Now, you know, in life, even Christians go through challenges. Anybody in here, don't raise your hand, go through challenges. Crisis comes to everyone. I think it's a common denominator. If you're alive on earth long enough, you're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some issues. They're just there. But, you know, I was sitting there this morning, and I was sitting there last night, and I was thinking about this is the anniversary, second year anniversary of my good friend, Mike Stanley, went to heaven. And it really touched my life. I mean, sometimes I feel alienated from, I'm a unique bird, and everybody can testify to that. I'm, I'm going to talk about Jesus no matter where I go. Well, Mike was a kindred brother that was the same way. Didn't care about your denial, what you thought, what you felt. He was going to interrupt your righteousness with his righteousness. It's just the way it is. He was going to make Jesus known, no matter what. And, he, and it's so awesome. Well, he went on. But he gave me a picture one time, and, and I really thought it was the greatest thing. He took this picture off of some album that was on that Jesus Christ Superstar, a movie that was made years ago. And it had a picture of a smiling Jesus. And out of his lip came this little thing that says, Trust me. <laughs> I just get so excited every time I see that picture. Trust me. I see Mike, I was looking at a bunch of his old notes that his wife gave me all his biblical material and all this stuff, you know, I was looking at some of his notes. And I said, you know, God, he had so much going. Why did he have to go? He said, trust me. Amen. Okay. See, you, it's the, some of the greatest teachers of the planet taught the word of God. Just kink. They're dead and gone. You don't hear nothing of Kenneth Hagin anymore. You don't hear anything of Kenneth, uh, I mean, uh, um, or Roberts anymore. I mean, it's like these guys were champions of God, but yes, people never heard of them. Huh? Who? See, it's not if anybody ever remembers you or not. It's did you make a deposit with your life in the hands of God and trust Him that He would do His will through you? It's not going to be man. Oh, brother James, everybody going to know you when you die. Shoot, I'll be gone. And they'll say who? See, it's not a question of who. It's He. Did we represent Him? Did we make His name known in the circles that we were in? Did we care more about Him than we do ourselves? Well, you see, I find that Adam sinned in the garden, and the message that I'm going to teach today is, trust me. And it's something very important to understand that Adam had faith in God. He knew God was God, right? He was created by God. He knew God was God. But what was dealt with in his carnality was trust. His challenge inside him's left, would he trust what God said over what he sees? And his wife ate of the tree and didn't die. He thought the devil told, that, that told his wife, die, you won't die. That you, that tree you be as a God, learning good and evil. So he had to make a decision at that point that his wife ate of that tree and, and she didn't die that maybe there was some truth in what that devil said. So he changed who he trusted. He trusted the voice of the devil and the circumstances that he saw that he didn't understand. And he ate of the tree and he brought death upon all of us. For by one man sin entered the world and death by sin because all have sinned. People are not dying out there because they're sinners. 
people are dying out there right now because they do not have the delivering power of Jesus Christ. Even Christians, other than maybe uh, uh, one of you out there I can pick out. <laughs> don't sin. Don't ever fall short in any area. But you know what? I know who I have to trust. Because if I tried to trust me, I'd fail. I trust him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is a scripture that God gave me January 22, 1980, when I surrendered my life. And I said, God, I don't care if you kill me. You can kill me right now. I'd rather just die. Do yourself a favor. Get rid of me. And he didn't. He gave me two scriptures, Hosea 4, 6, and he gave me Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And Hosea 4, 6 was my people. That's you, James. You accepted me when you were 12 years old. The reason you're in the mess and all that you created in your life is because you did not know my word. Hosea 4, 6. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Listen to me. You're not destroyed because there's a devil. You're destroyed because you don't know the answer to the devil when he shows up. I gave you power to trade over scorpions and serpents, James. Tell that devil to go to hell. Tell him to get out of your face. Don't give place to him. Just rebuke him. But how many times do we psychosomatically let him disorder our lives? Well, now, you know, maybe I, I'm not as good as Brother James. I mean, you know, he prays and seeks out and does all the will of God. I don't do near what he does. Maybe God's not going to... See, you're confused still. You still lack the knowledge that when Jesus said, I chose you, don't you ever tell me what the devil did in your past life. Tell me what I said you are in the future. Tell me what I say about yourself. And then he gave me Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. He said, trust in, rely upon, put your confidence in the Lord with all your heart, your inner being. Lean not on your own understanding, your ability to reason. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Now, this is one of the most important things you're ever going to learn. See, trust, it, it's, it, what it means is assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. It's one in which confidence is placed, dependence on something future or contingent hope. We must come to that place to understand this is a process that will develop intimacy and spiritual breakthrough. When God told me that scripture, he said, look, James, you don't know enough of me yet, so just trust me. You're mine, but trust me. Do not lean on your own understanding, your intellect, your ability to reason. We have so much confidence in our own self that a lot of times we become idolatrous. One time God told me after I turned my life over to him to look at the scripture of 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It said, for he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He said, James, tell me you're righteous. Oh, I can't do that, Lord. Thank you for saving me. I mean, thank you, Lord. But, and he spoke. And he said, you're an idolater. What? No, whoa, whoa, no. Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? You're a false god. What? No. No. You dare to come up against me when I said you're the righteousness, you've been made righteous by my son's blood, and you want to sit there and tell me No. Who are you? You got to look at my word and say, I am who you are. Don't tell me who you are. Tell me who I say you are. Everybody say, I am righteous. I am, righteous. I am, holy. I am holy. You see, that is something you're not going to feel. That's something you're going to say. I don't care what your past said. It doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It don't matter how bad, nasty, and vile, and contentedly you were. That person is dead. You're a new created being in Christ. And you've got to trust Him. You've got to trust what He did. You didn't see it. You weren't back there 2,000 years ago. But you had the Holy Spirit bring it to your attention and you embraced it. Now, live it. Amen. Give up on that old man. Tell that carnal mind to shut up and start living for God. Start saying, yes, God, I'm going to do what you say to do. 
See, he said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. The, when you see the word lean, you should remember that suggests you support yourself. Well, God don't expect me to sit back and just do nothing. I'm going to go out there. You will never, ever get anywhere with God until you stop trusting in yourself and start trusting in Him totally. Well, God, I owe all this money. He gave me $276,000, paid off every bill I had, paid off everything I had, bought me new cars and trucks, a boat, motorcycles. Don't limit God. Oh, but what you do to earn it? Nothing. Nothing. See, you better learn to trust. Wouldn't it be a, a consequence that if you got to heaven and you realized that God had this whole earth was his and he just wanted to hear you say, would you give me some of it, Lord, to bless? He, he said, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. But you don't ever ask me. You keep trying to figure out how you're going to fix yourself. How much money can you earn? Take two or three jobs. Don't go to church. Uh, you, uh, you don't even care about my word anymore. All you want to do is work and make money so you can take care of yourself. Why do you want to take care of yourself? Why don't you cast the whole of your cares upon me because I care for you and I will fix you. I will bless you. Say, he's going to bless me. See, the word acknowledge is the word yada. It means know by observation, investigation, reflection, or firsthand experience. The highest form of yada is intimacy as in a marriage. God says this, you are betrothed to Christ. And when you were accepted by him, he said, I want you to be intimate with me. I want you to know you don't have to be ashamed of you. If the son of glory chose you and said, you're my daughter, you're my son. I don't care what you've done. You shouldn't care either. You should care that you're accepted. That he said, I want intimacy with you. I was talking to a sister the other day, and she was telling me about a little, little girl that was going through a lot when she was teaching in a Christian school. And she said that the little girl was crying because her mom and dad were getting a divorce, and she was just tore up over it. She just did. And so she would go and sit there. She got the little girl to come sit on her lap, and she just hugged her. And she said, honey, close your eyes. I just want you to see Jesus. That's what he wants to do to you right now. He wants to hug you. He wants you to feel his love for you. And every day she went down and had lunch with that little girl and ate half of her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> and that girl, she saw her just the other day. And she said, you probably remember. She said, oh, honey, I, I don't. I'm sorry. It's just been so long, you know. She says, you, and she told her that story. You never forget when you've been touched by God. You never forget when you've been touched by God. But if we'd stop running from God and run to Him and let Him hug me. Yeah, I need a hug today, Daddy. I'm weak. I'm silly. I'm goofy. I'm stupid. I got ever got a problem in this world. But God, you love me. Just let me get inside that love and trust you, God, that you're going to make every way right, even though I make it wrong. You see, God's trying to draw us into that intimacy with Him. He wants us to have that. See, intimacy with God in prayer it conceives and births blessings and victories. Everyone say blessings and victories. It comes through the prayers. Father God, I just come to you today, Lord. I need financial breakthroughs, God. Father, I need health issues healed today, God. God, I need deliverance from past things that I'm not always in control of my life and they take over. God, I thank you right now. You're there for me. You're my most high. You're my all in all. And all of a sudden, that prayer of intimacy, God seeing you personally. One thing about my whole life, when I walked through all the hell I ever went through, I felt like he was personally still there with me. Yes. It's like he'd never leave me. See, we are so stupid when it comes to covenant. When God went in covenant when I was a 12-year-old boy, he didn't break the covenant. I did. But my part didn't count. That's why Abraham, when he went up there, and he would have blown the covenant. So God went, no, I'll send Jesus in there with me. I'll go in covenant with him for y'all. Thank God Jesus and the Father will never break covenant. So guess what? We can't break the covenant. If we stand in the fullness of God's love, that we just accept that we're accepted because of what Jesus did. So you trust him. You start trusting. You see, the word, he'll direct your path. Direct is the word yasher. That means to be straight, 
Upright, pleasing, good. It appears here in an intensive form and means to make straight and right. God will straighten out the path of his devoted, trusting servants. You got problems in your path? Run to the throne. Sit down on Jesus' lap. Say, Lord, help me. I'm screwed. I can't fix me. I got every legal eye looking at me trying to say, well, you don't use the perfect language. You're not perfect. Thing. You don't know enough. You don't know enough. I don't care. I'm me for thee. Will you be thee for he? That's all he cares about. It's not who your greatest teacher is, who you look up to the most. What you think, I, a lot of times that's ego and pride. A lot of times it leads you still in idolatry because you still control yourself. You don't listen to God. You listen to yourself. Well, that guy, oh, I like that one. Oh, he's my teacher. Oh, I like that one over there. You're still not being led. You follow what you want. And you get and embrace what you want. But remember, when you face him, what you have is what you got from him or you got for yourself. God wants to bring us into that relationship now where we can walk in that path. See, Psalms 119.7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes, O oh, forsake me not utterly. Do you realize that the psalmist was crying out and he said, Look, God, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Learning means you're processing. It means that you're seeing that God said you're righteous. Well, what does righteous mean? It means right with God. Well, what, what curtails and follows being right with God? Obedience to God. When you know God, then you know what pleases Him. And if you know what pleases Him, then you walk in uprightness. You decide, I'm going to follow Him. I'm going to do what He said, no matter what I feel about it. Job 1, 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed or hated evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men on the earth. Did he say he was the greatest man on the earth? Huh? Did he say he was one of the greatest men on the earth? Let me read it again. Y'all not listen. His substance was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Oh, okay, sorry. East. Earth, east. Okay. He was a great man. Can I get an amen? amen? And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his way. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their fasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons and daughters have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Thou Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Joan, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and hates evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear not God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Who blessed Job? Huh? God. Satan testified to it, didn't he? He said, but you made a hedge around him. That means when you're hooked up with God, there's a hedge around you and you're protected. 
God blesses it. Get this in your head. God blesses his children. If you're not blessed, you're not seeking God. God is a God of blessing, not a God of cursing. God told him, he tried to get, in fact, he tried to get there in that story. He tried to get God to curse Job. If you, if you, God, will remove that hedge and let me get at it, he'll curse you to your face. He said, y'all better hear this. What you ask me to do is already in your power. Just don't kill him. You see, God would even let the hedge down because he knew the authority was, that Adam gave up. Satan could just say, all oh, right, see, you're, you're, you're a lying God. You really didn't give him covenant. You didn't give him Adamic rule over the earth. Because if he didn't, he had the right to give it away. So you see, you're an, you're an Indian giver. That makes you a liar. You didn't really give it to him. So you're going to trap me with words? You don't take his life. That's all I'm going to tell you. And he went and killed all his kids, took all his, land, all his cattle, I think burned all his fields, just impoverished him. When you start getting attacked that way, don't go looking at God. Why are you letting this happen to me? It's the thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Get up and rebuke him. I rebuke you. I don't care if there's a thousand of you coming. I rebuke all of you. You stand. And when you don't understand, you'll see what at the end of Job's life, he had twice as much wealth that he had before. You see, he stood. He played his part with God. And God always keeps his part. God will bless you. God will heal you. God will deliver you. Because why? He said, trust me. Learn. I'm teaching you to trust me. See, God told the devil to consider Job because he was upright before him and he hated evil. Isaiah 45, 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and out and sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Everything the devil stolen, you can bring it right back out and get it. And hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou that thou hast not known me. They that may know from thee the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and created darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. And let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Amen. Woo! Amen. See, God don't create the bad. He creates the good. He tells you, I know the bad. I created, I created Satan's tools because I created Satan. He created him when he was Lucifer. So there's nothing in the mind of Lucifer that God didn't know. So God said, that's evil. Because it's thoughts that were made and created out of itself, not generated by me. So God said, I'm not dumb. I know that stuff. I know the evil's there. But why do you look at the evil? Why don't you look at the good? You know, we get so bound up looking at Satan and all the crap that he's doing instead of looking at God and what he's doing. God, let him arise. Your enemies will be scattered. Your blessings are already there. You just have to go up and say, by grace, I receive them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody say, thank you. See, he promised the king in Cyrus, he promised him the crooked path would be made straight. How many times you've got so many veins going out so many directions, you're so scared this one's going to collapse on you and that one's going to get you? And God said, I will make the crooked path straight. To who? Those who trust me. Trust me. God said, please listen to me. The trust factor. You've got to not look at your circumstance. You've got to look at the word and say, I will put my trust in the only true God. Isaiah 44, 2. Thus said the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, 
which will help thee. Fear not. Everybody say that. Fear not. Oh, Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offsprings. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who as I shall call... And shall declare it and set it in order for me since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Wow. The word Jeshurun that he used there was talking about the others. Jeshurun was talking about you and I. Jeshurun, that means upright ones in Hebrew. Upright ones. A name always applied to Israel as God's righteous nation. See, when God calls you righteous, you are? When God calls you righteous, you are? You see, Righteousness is not based upon consistency of your effort. Righteousness is not based upon your being a good and an upright and wonderful person. Righteousness is declared and decreed and established by faith in the one who said it. I trust my salvation not because I'm perfect. I trust my salvation because of the one who sent it to me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. When you recognize that inside yourself, then you'll start saying, why have I been so foolish? Why have I laid here all this time letting circumstances take me down and all I do is talk the garbage instead of talking the jewels? What does God want to do? Psalms 2.12. Kiss the sun. Everybody say that. Lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. See, kiss is a sign of submission. You know, have you ever gone, young guys, you know, you, you want to kiss this girl so bad, man, you're just dripping, you're just, <laughs> she's so, oh, and you get closer to her, and she lets you get closer, and you just get closer. All of a sudden, you just can't stand it. You, you grab her and you get a kiss. Do you know what? She submitted. That's what made the kiss so sweet. She didn't stop you. And you walk away. Oh, man. Ugh, the lipstick was horrible. But she liked it. She won See, that's the beginning of a relationship. An intimacy. There was a place of now you submitted to the other. And that's what God says, kiss the face of the sun. I submit to you, Jesus. I'm not ashamed to you. I'm not ashamed to you. I don't care. I'm married to you. And I'm not gay. I know what you meant by it symbolically. I know what you meant. There's nothing closer to a man than his bride to be. I know. I got beat half to death one time because two guys that didn't want me to get married took me out to the bars and tried to get me wasted and I got them thrown out of two bars and then they got in a big fight and beat me half to death. And two black guys and fractured cheekbones and everything else, but I got home to my girl. <laughs> Nobody was going to keep me away from Debbie. Amen. Nobody will keep you away from Jesus. Amen. He's got a greater strength and a hold on you than you give him credit for. Yes. Psalms 4-5. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Trust will produce acts of righteousness. 
Look, every time God's word speaks through your heart and then you hear it to go give it to someone, you'll fight a carnal war in your brain. What are you trying to show off? Who do you think you're better than other people? Or you, oh, you think you're more spiritual? You've got to cut through that and say, I trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And God spoke to us in my heart, so it's going to come out of my mouth to who he sent me to. And listen to me, I don't care if they like it or not. I have gone to people and gave them something the Lord told me to tell them, and they didn't like it, and vice versa. I've had people tell me stuff, and I didn't like it, but it was still true. See, if we shut up, the devil wins. If we speak up, righteousness prevails. See, righteousness exalts a nation, but sins are reproached to any people. And as long as the, the Christians in America will sit down and play pacific and do nothing but pacify themselves, well, I go to church, I'm a good person, the heck with the rest of it, then you're upholding sin. You're not upholding righteousness. Because righteousness will change the environment you're in. Psalms 5.11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him with a shield. Wow. See, rejoicing is a product of trusting in the Lord. When you come into church, you're all going, meh. I don't see you trust in the Lord. You ought to be coming in here and say, look, it ain't going to be one big old entrance to heaven where all of a sudden everybody's got to be processed. Oh, uh, you got to go over St. Peter's, got to get all over here. They got to process, get all the dull looks and all the junk off your faces and the attitudes that you've carried with you. They're, no, no, no. There'll be none of that. It'll be wiped away instantly. But what about now? Christians walk around and look like they're sucking for Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> you going to take this? No, get away from me. I don't want what you got. <laughs> you see, there's a place you got to start saying, what do I example? What do I show out? Listen, do you care about this world? Do you care about the people around you? If not, you'll be isolated into deterioration and erosion. You'll be a part of the problem, not a part of the solution. I can see the country sick, but we're healed. We're the healing of the nations. We're to reach out and do what God said to do, and that's what he's choosing us to do. Psalm 7.1. Shagion of David, which sang unto the Lord concerning the words of Cush the Benjamite, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Rejoicing is a product of trusting in the Lord, but it saves us from all of our enemies. Did he say, Let God arise and his enemies be scattered? No enemy can stand when his praises go forth. Sometimes you need to just get up and say, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad. Woo, wait a minute, stop. We missed, everybody's gone. Hello, I'm, I'm trying to get him back, Lord. Ready? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. Rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. You see, listen to me. This is an exercise, not in futility, but it's an exercise in reality. If Jesus Christ walked in this room right now and he said, come here, give me a hug. I love you. My God, you'd walk out of here, beam, <laughs> where somebody don't know him. Woo! Why? Because you're so full of him. You know what? I've had people tell me, you're full of it. I said, you're absolutely right. I'm overflowing. Because <laughs> why? It's the truth. It's what God says. Man, I love God. He's so awesome. Psalms 9:10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. He will not forsake you. Everybody say that. He will not forsake me. 
When you get down in those dark, gloomy places, you get in that atmosphere that's trying to take you down, say it out loud, get to Psalms 9 and 10, say, He will not forsake me. Amen. Say it again. He will not forsake me. You see, it's not going to be me fighting your battles. It's not going to be the biggest pastors on television going to fight your battles. It's you standing up there with Jesus in you, and you better get acquainted with him that it's so sweet to walk with Jesus. That he's going to take care of your fights. Psalms 11.1. 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. What's he saying there? The Lord has your back. You ain't running from nothing. You ain't flying off. Shoo, get out of here, God. Excuse me? God ain't going anywhere. You might. See, God has our back. There's no reason to be afraid. There's no terror that can come against you that God's not right there with you. Psalm 16, 1. A musician of David. Minkta, minktum, whatever. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not to thee. But the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight, he will preserve you. You know, you put preservative in something so it don't rot or decay. God will protect and preserve you so you don't rot or decay. That's why you can say with a long life, I will satisfy my soul. Psalm 17, 7. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by the right hand them that would put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Wow. He assures his loving kindness. Listen, take it not lightly when someone messes with you. The Bible said the angels of God stand in readiness to avenge all civil disobedience that's brought against you, the saint. God's got to hold them back. The Holy Spirit says, ah, ah, not yet. Judgment is reserved for a day. It's not now. They'll make it. They'll be okay. Because Jesus prayed for us that we'd be okay. Psalms 18.2 The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom will I trust? My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Woo! All things necessary for victory. Look, don't look defeated. Be not a victim. Be a victor. See that God will make everything necessary for you to have the victory. Psalms 18.30 As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. He is our shield. Do you realize when he said he gave us the shield of faith that it would knock down all the fiery darts of the wicked? Do you realize that you have a shield of faith? Or do you, you should have been in Sunday school this morning. Brother Joseph teaching a great lesson on Ephesians 6. And he was going through it. You know, if you don't understand the shields, if you don't understand your armor, then you're standing there naked against the enemy when God clothed you. Take that shield. When those suckers come at you, you remember what you did two weeks ago. Pew! Not from you, I won't remember it. Pew! Knock that thing down. That's what a shield's for. Here comes that fiery missile. Pew! Nope, nope, nope. I'm the righteousness of God. Don't care what you say. Don't care even what I've done right or wrong. You won't change my position by what you're trying to make me possess. 
I'll repent. I fell short. Thank you, God. Thank you, devil, for reminding me. I'm sorry, God. Forgive me. He's okay. It's good. It's forgotten. Come on. God is always for you, not against you. He's not going to say, well, as an Indian giver, well, you really messed up that time. I'm going to dump you. God's not doing that. He's always there to lift you up. Psalms 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We trust in no other source. Look, if I'm standing up here by myself and I'm overnumbered, I'm overwhelmed. I've done it at Mardi Gras in New Orleans. I know what it's like to be out there at 3 in the morning and everybody drunk beyond oblivion, wired up on everything you can think of, and have them jump in my face. And I started praying. There were these men doing this horrible chant about Jesus having sex with Mary Magdalene and all this other junk, laughing and cutting up. I started crying. I took my bull mic and started praying, Father, hold out this sin against them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them, Lord. The whole crowd went silent. And a shift. They started attacking them. I had to scream in the mic, no, leave them alone. They would have beat them to death. See, People can get cocked up the wrong way and they're still wrong. I stood there for those men's salvation, not their destruction. And when they, as soon as I stopped, the crowd listened, they stopped when they heard me say that. I mean, one guy. You know, thousands of people all around me and they're all obeying what I said. Don't even think one of us can't put a thousand to flight too. When you're not afraid, when you don't give a rip what anybody's going to think of me or what they're going to do to me, I know who I represent and I know what I'm saying and I know why I'm saying it. And all of a sudden, there's an anointing that comes out of you that will pierce that darkness around you, and it will flee. I've seen girls get down there. There's two girls fighting outside of a bar down there on Bergen Street. And this girl, man, she, she was, had no wig on. She was bald. And they were fighting in the street, and all the crowd just there, get it all out. They loved it. We jumped out there with our Bible, jumped in the middle of it, stop this in the name of Jesus, and grabbed a hold of them, started praying with them, got them, get right, got them right there to repent, found out that the girl had cancer. She went to the bathroom. Her, her boyfriend did, and, and, and this guy was hitting on, 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 on her girlfriend. Her boyfriend was hitting on her girlfriend. And she freaked out, man. She, thought, she said, honey, I love you. I didn't do that. He come out and did that. I didn't do that. See how confusion gets in those atmospheres? And that spirit was going to cause a big old mess. We got out there. Both the girls repented, asked for forgiveness, crowned Jesus over their life, and got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues right there on Bourbon Street. And I'm going to tell you right now, that crowd went, whoo! That whole street right there was emptied out. Because why? When the Holy Ghost shows up, the devil runs. He don't want to mess with the Holy Spirit. But we got Christians that well, I don't believe in that talking in tongues. Well, you get out of it. Go, go play with the devil. Because he ain't afraid of you. You can't do nothing? Pray in tongues. Excuse me a minute. Oh, I'm getting out of here. What's that weird stuff? It's a power that you don't know nothing about. But it's a power that's rising up in the church today and it's, nothing can stop it. Amen. Because why? We cannot do it. We are powerless without the Holy Spirit. And God wants us to put our trust in the things of God more than the things of the world. Amen. Psalms 25 two. Oh, my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. The biggest thing that you're going to have to understand is that God will deliver you from the shame. Do not be intimidated by feeling you're not good enough or who you to go in and pray for somebody. That's a bank president. I don't care who it is. If they need Jesus, I got him. And I'll walk in and I'll pray. And I'll pray now to some... Oh, please forgive me. I'm not on your level. I know I don't have a bull. You, he's not on your level. You give him what God has in you. And don't be ashamed of it. Psalms 34, 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. None. See, he will not condemn his own. 
Listen, God's not, listen to me. God's a good father. He was willing to go and let his son pay the price for our sins so he could accept us. That doesn't tell me that dad's holding something back. He's got another trick up his sleeve. He's going to really wipe us because he don't like us. Get away from those kind of preachers. Get away from that junk. Psalms 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Did it say blessed is the man that walks in the trust of the Lord? Huh? Listen, your trust in the Lord will produce blessings. That's all it can produce. Can't produce hurt, pain, destruction. It can only produce blessings. Psalms 52.8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. See, trust in the mercy of God forever. Don't ever stop trusting that God is for you and not against you. You cannot afford to give yourself the pleasure of pity. You pity yourself, you're powerless. You praise your way to victory and you see success. Because God is the good guy, not the bad guy. Psalms 56.3 What time I'm afraid, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. See? Verse 4. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Trust removes fear. I've trusted in the Lord in some horrific times in my walk with Him. And He always saw me through. I don't care, folks. I don't care. It could be so dastardly. He will be your ever-present help in the time of your trouble. I've got a brother right now losing his wife to cancer. But I don't see her lost. She's still alive. I refuse. Oh, you're in denial. No, I'm in a trial. And I stand on what God's Word said. I stand on the court of heaven and what God said. And you know what? I told my brother, I said, Brother, do you want me to see her dead? No. Do you want me to quit talking like this? No, not ever. Please don't. See, as long as love is alive, then love has a voice. And it says the truth. It doesn't say, well, well, bless your heart. No. In war, people die all around you. I remember a guy in Vietnam told me how his buddy above him went to the, uh, when those CYO or whatever you call it, where the soldiers go and get entertained and they come back. And he come back and he told his brother, get your head back in the fight, man. You're back in La La Land with Hollywood people and all the beauties and all that stuff. Get your head back in the fight, man. He set up a dream and uh, took a bullet right through the head. Blood started coming down all over in his cab. It's a war, folks. People die. Innocent people die. We're not in this for pleasure trip. We're in it for righteousness, to get people saved. This world is going to be done away with one day, and only those who see Jesus Christ will be spared from the horrors of eternal damnation. Amen. We're not preaching damnation. We're preaching deliverance from it. Just get the truth out there. That's what we stand on. Psalm 62, 8. Trust in Him at all times. Did it say sometimes? You people, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. He is our refuge. Don't you ever let the devil condemn you and say, well, you screwed up too bad this time. God don't want nothing to do with you. Don't you ever listen to that lie. Psalm 64.10. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all the upright in heart shall glory. See, he produces gladness. 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, not some of the days of my life. Goodness and mercy is not based upon things you experience bad. They're based on what God said. Goodness and mercy is with me. I choose to rejoice. Psalm 73, 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. When you trust God, you will declare his works. Let me tell you something. I declared other people's works until I had works of my own. I don't have to just go out and talk about all the other great men of God and what they have did and how many powerful things they've done. I have my own stories of what I've seen the salvation God produces in hospitals, in morgues, in every place I've ever been. I've seen God turn the ungodliness into righteousness. You see, if you'll just trust the Lord, He wants to use you more than you want to be used. Can I get an amen? amen. Psalm 91 too. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor of the destruction that waiteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. He is my protection. Yeah. Psalms 118.8 It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. We trust him only. Do not look for who's going to bail you out. There's many a time I've had hardships going on in my life and I'm going to go, who could I get close to? Who could I rub to? Who could I whine a little bit? Maybe they would spiritually catch, I need something. And God never has brought that to pass that way. He said, you come to me. You don't go to others. You come to me. I'll take care of you. Psalms 119.42. Psalms 119.42. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me. For I trust in the word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. He always gives you an answer. If you don't get in the word of God and really learn, then you really not be able to recognize the voice of God. Every one of us need a ever-present help in the time of our trouble. And there's nothing more refreshing than when the word of God rises up. I like it when the Lord wakes me up like he did the other morning and said, Six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning said, Faith still pleases me. Faith. That's all. John Osteen died in his, son, in his son in law's arms and he grabbed him and pulled him to his chest and he said, Faith is worth it. And he died. Last words he said, Faith is worth it. And he went and left this life. He passed that baton on and said, don't ever live any other way but by faith. Psalms 125.1 A song of degrees. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Everybody say it. I can't be moved. I didn't hear you. I can't See, that's a decision that you have to say because Satan says, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think you just quoted what the preacher said. And he will come to try to steal those words out of your mouth. That's his job. But you know what? That only should fortify you and reinforce you. 
I can't be moved. When he comes tomorrow morning and he tries to knock you down with a phone call, and he comes tomorrow and tries to hit you, say, I can't be moved. I'm not moved nor shaken by what I see, but I am moved by the word of the living God that is forever, ever, ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. So you can trust it, you can lock arms with it, and you better know it. Tell all these preachers that say you don't need the word, bye-bye, go somewhere else. I need what's established forever. I'm established in a covenant word that if you can break part of it, you can break all of it. God said, I don't fail in anything. So we can put our trust in him. Let's all stand. You know, I am so excited to see a church that's on the verge of a breakthrough. I've been in here for years and I have seen people that just come and go and still want the pleasures and the cares of this world more than they want the fullness of God in their life. And God said, that's none of your business, that's mine. You just keep on preaching the truth. You just keep reaching out to people. And you know what? One day all that razzmatazz is going to dry up and drift away. But the word of God will last forever. Amen. When you get that word down in you and you make it the anchor of your soul and you start saying, oh God, let me sound like David. Let me sound like Solomon. Let me sound like Jesus. Let me quote to my enemy scripture. You got a minute, devil? You want to talk to me? Here. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, excuse me, devil, you're not paying attention. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You leadeth me beside still waters. You prepare the table amongst mine enemies. So, uh, I'm not ready to battle. I ain't through eating yet. Would you sit down? See, when you get the position that God says is yours, all hell has to bow to you. Because God said so. He gave us power over hell. But you've got to see it in your spirit. You can't just have it in your head. And your challenges are coming. You need to do something about them. Today, I'm going to pray over you and break those forces of the enemy that has assassinated your character, has made you seem less than. And today, God says, I'm going to start a new work inside your heart. Heavenly Father, I just come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the good word of God. I thank you, God, that a mantle is placed on this church to be a place of love and healing, that not a place of condemnation and rejection, but a place of love and healing. And that, God, people will come for the right reason because they're hungry. They're thirsting for righteousness, and they will be blessed here. Now, Father God, I thank you for each person in this congregation that they see themselves a part of that mantle. And they go out there and they bring the lost. They bring the undone. They bring those people, Lord God, so they can hear the truth. Whether they stay or not, that's still their choice. But our part is to go and bring in the sheep. And we give you the praise for it now in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Praise God. Tell someone you love them and you can be dismissed.